Not alone are you the first rapper. Not alone are you the first stylist, MC. You also put up your own money Correct. to start giving the parties that actually made this flourish to what it is. Yeah, that, but, but I take it again as the brotherhood that I have with people, man. Lucky Bling is knowing him, but I always said when he came aboard, he's my partner, man. Absolutely. Like Much I always respect. said, Perk is my partner. Only certain guys can get that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my partner, man. I always said two heads are better than one. And then again, to do things alone ain't a good thing, man. You if you can't like... share the love, it feels better, man. You know? Just don't be an idiot with what you're doing. But we go how we go and we do what we do. And that's why I say again with hip hop, you know, it's so different. But look where it went. Look how many people, like you said, it took them so many places. It ain't nowhere you can't go now. Even with the B-Boy, now it's in the Olympics. Wow. So getting back to that, you put in $700 and made over ten. Yeah, it was easy, easy. Crazy. We couldn't even tell people Genius. Then. We couldn't tell people then. That was all three dollars. We couldn't tell people. Genius. Because that put, that put the pressure on you too much. Like even that song with Biggie. That's what they used to do to me. Yo, Coke, uh, some cats over here said they gonna stick y'all up tonight. This is why I had artillery. I didn't bring it for being scared or all that. But again, you got the makers, the takers, and the breakers. The makers make it, the takers take sit back and take it. it. If you don't break them, then get out the game. I was taught about the game, that's why I said I, at that time I didn't want to portray that type of style, but that's what it was. Like I said, in the daytime I'm with good guys, but when it get dark, it's a different type of crowd out there, brothers. And when you go in different clubs, it's a different type. And, you, and when you go on another block, you're not the baddest cat on the block. Everybody know who's bad on the block. And, and, and it's hard, man. That's why, again, with the gangs, and it showed how they went rampant, and what you gonna do? But once again, be X born. That's why you gotta put the X up. I put that up too. Somebody took that, me and Benny Bronco. You know, again, it's just in me, man. I mean, like, people could say it, I'm hip hop, and nah, I'm hip hop. Man. I so, can't get this out of me, man. In Carlito's way, Benny Blanco's a real character. Okay, yes. Yes. yes, yes. That was my man, Benny Bronco. Come on, people. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, come, come on, come on people. Benny Bronco, that's my dude. He's a real character. Real person. Got Benny you. Bronco, <laughs> Benny Bronco from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> actually <laughs> a real character. You yeah, hear this? Yeah. This yeah. is history today, right now. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. Like the Clark Kent. The original Clark Kent came from her. First they had Timmy Tim. They, they don't even mention Timmy Tim. Timmy Tim got passed away at an early age. That was the first guy Herc ever got to play on the set. So what, DJ? Yeah, yeah, Timmy Tim. Timmy Tim. Then right after Timmy Tim, a minute or two, he got Clark Kent. That was with the twins coming from the nine. With Vinny and them, El Dorado, Mike, Mike. But El Dorado, Mike, Mike came through the hustling. So, you know, as a hustler. But Timmy, Tim, and Clark Kent. And that's why they thought, they thought I was Clark Kent. In between the names of, because me and Kent get on the set, they see Kent with glasses. They thought that was Coke LaRock, you know. And the show again at that time, I used to play at the After Hours spot. See, again, we, we was doing so much then, man, that we would go to the Hevelo from 8 to 4. But from 4.30 to 3 in the afternoon, I would be at the after hour spot, me and Herc. There was a gambling spot called Top of the Lane. Not the Hilltop, which was the commercial after hour spot. This was a gambling spot. spot Big yeah. Smitty and them owned it. You had to come in there with 100,000 or better. Guys lost cars in there. My man's father sold me a triple cranberry Toronado because a guy owed him 100,000. And he said, Coke, you got 4,000? He knew I had 4,000 because I'm with his son. And I lived two blocks from the spot. He said, go get that, Coke, go get 4,000. And you got that car. It was a brand new Toronado just when they had a four-wheel drive, cranberry. 
I ran home, got the 4,000. He made the cat sign the papers over to me. Next day, I went, got a cranberry suit, cranberry blizzards, and I drove up on the block, cranberry hair. You know what I'm saying? Y'all remember when they come with the collard greens? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, man. And yeah. I was going to Dick Gidron. I met Ali and Dick Gidron. Y'all remember when Ali used to walk down 125th Street? Muhammad Ali showed Ali. love. He ain't, he ain't any bodyguards. He was a people's champ. Come on. Some guys was... I met Farrakhan on 116th inside the Sabaz store when he had white lizards. I went to an after hour <laughs> spot right across from the mosque. Farrakhan yeah, I did had much. white lizards. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Y'all stop. Come on. Let's give it up <laughs> like this. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just stuff. saying. This is history right this, here. This is what, what plays out in, in a way of time that it cannot never be the essence of getting lost. And this is why Coke LaRock is still standing to this day. And at least he have a voice and he is who he is. And thank you for having us here that's bringing this to a bigger platform. And taking this to a different level because all these people and younger people, I say, because uh, he's close to 70 years old. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Amazing. He lived throughout time. <laughs> yes. And I'm blessed to be his partner, just like Kool Herc and everybody else. But um, this is what history is supposed to be told. This is the foundation. This is where it all first started. And, you know, then the bricks came layers after layers after layers and form where it's at now. A strong bond and everything, but please don't forget where Coke started this, and this came out of nothing. When there was no money, there was just for fun, and it was all about unity, peace, and love, mm. and all the gangs was involved with that. Mm. You know, that's why there was so many murdering and so many gangsters and so many. After a while, somebody was like, "Too much bloodshed. We're gonna have to sit down and put this, and uh, you know, to rest and see how." We could form into a unity and do it in a business style because they were seeing that other people was doing it in, a, in a level of making money differently. Mm -hmm. And that's when corporations started building and CEOs and, and, and everything else that became a brand. And so Harlem had a brand. The Bronx had a brand. But it was beautiful because the Bronx was always with Harlem and Harlem was always the Bronx. And that's when it opens all the five boroughs. And that's how strong this became. Hip hop became a movement as, with all respect, I hope Chuck D don't get mad at this, but mm -hmm. Coca Rock was the speaker that maybe inspired Chuck D to do, you know, say the powerful movement and other people, you know? I don't think he denies that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He doesn't deny that. Yeah. Uh, nah, but I like to put it out there because he got to understand that the way I feel. The same way everybody got their own story, how they see a perspective, or, or you could say today was uh, the sky was blue, but it was really shady, you know? So it, in my view, it became so strong, and then look where he took it to. He took it worldwide himself, and it opens a lot of doors, and that's the power of freedom of speech, okay? And the voice of Coke Rock made movement. It, it broke errors, barriers. It did a lot of stuff that people was not expecting. Look at, like we said, Malcolm X. Look at Martin Luther King. These are pioneers. These are icons. These are legends throughout all history, throughout all around the world. Because they didn't just touch one area. They touch everybody somehow, somewhere, in some form. But now, what I say is, this man right here, he is who he is. And he, I am blessed, and we all blessed, like I said again. Absolutely. And that he's still here. Let's take advantage of this. Yes. And let's yes. take this to a stronger place. And let it, these young kids understand that this man is where you hear Biggie, Nas, yes. Jay-Z, all this. Because the only thing they see is maybe Ron DMC, mm -hmm. let's say. You know, that era. Because remember, Ron DMC broke the uh, 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 barrier also, you know, with the rock and roll. And they became, they merged, and then they became global. Fine. But let's go back. And this is where your setting and your platform is at right now to make sure that everybody knows who is Coke Rock and who is the legend and who is the pioneer and who's the icon.